grad school, it's a dream for many of us, right? But once you get there, the reality hits you hard and you start to realize there are things you wish you had known before starting this journey. And that is what we are going to talk about today. Today, I want to talk to you about five biggest regrets that all grad students have. First regret that I think all students have is that they don't realize how many resources they had when they had access to the university. I mean resources like library, all the software licenses you had, all the physical resources you had on site like gym and sports center and all the free sports courses. A lot of students don't realize as a grad student especially how many resources you have access to at your university. So don't forget to take advantage of those resources while you're there because once you graduate, uh, you lose all of that. The student discounts, the cheaper health insurance that you have, dental insurance that you have with your student network, the free sports courses, all of that that you have as a student, you're going to lose that as soon as you graduate. So take all the discounts, use all the resources, use everything that you have access to through your student portal or through your university don't forget to take advantage of that another regret that i see a lot of students have is not forming strong enough relationships with your advisors and with your supervisors yes i have seen that in a lot of recommendation letters that i review for students like you who are watching this video that the recommendations letters that they have from professors are so generic and it's obvious at first glance that the professor doesn't remember a thing about you, doesn't even know you personally. So try to make yourself memorable to your professor, to your advisor, because you're going to need them for the rest of your life. They are your connection. They are your window into both academia and also the industry. They are your primary connection. They're your first source of reference for wherever you're applying for a job, especially when you're just starting out and you're applying for your first jobs. So be memorable in some way to them so that when you're asking them for any recommendation letter, when you're asking them for anything in life later on, they will remember something about you and they will not just, you know, take a look at your transcript and give you just a standard recommendation letter that just mentions what grade you got in the subject they were teaching you or the project you did or the thesis you did with them. Yeah, you should form deeper connections with your professors at your university. The regret number three is not participating enough in extracurricular activities. Yes, your transcript is good, your grades are excellent, amazing, your studies are important, but the connections you make through your extracurricular activities, through making these friendships, through experiencing these environments are much more important for your personal growth as well as your professional growth. So when I volunteered at this particular IEEE Future Networks World Forum and a lot of my colleagues were attending this in person and I was at the registration desk. So when they were arriving, they were like, oh, it's Satya, you're here. What are you doing here? And that opened up a conversation. And it gave me an informal outlet to interact with them during lunch breaks or during uh, sessions, whenever they needed help with something. It gave me a chance to help them with something which made me in turn more memorable for them. So this type of activities, this type of forums, they really help you interact with people in a way that you simply cannot in a classroom or in a very restricted environment. Trust me, these interactions, these extracurricular activities are gonna open up more work opportunities, publication opportunities, collaboration opportunities, any sort of professional growth opportunities for you than your transcript ever will. Another regret a lot of students have is not making strong enough connections with their peers, people who are one or two years ahead of them in the university or who have graduated one or two years ahead of them. When I started my internship at Ericsson, it was actually through one of my peers, one of the students who graduated from my lab who worked with my professor, was already working at Ericsson at that time, who told me about this internship and who got me in, who referred me, and that's how I got this internship. After I got this internship, I referred two other people who also got that internship after me. And this is how the chain continues. So when you want those jobs, they are already there. They can refer you, they can help you get there. So yeah, don't forget to make connections with your peers. Focusing too much on your core courses, core competencies, and not taking advantage of any interdisciplinary research or other courses other than your core 
specialty and taking those courses from other disciplines. What do I mean by that? I took all of the courses from electrical engineering department. Whereas my university had a lot of other departments, humanities, music, art, photography, languages, social sciences, philosophy and psychology and the wealth of knowledge that was available to me that I could have taken advantage of but I didn't because I was too focused on my core courses. I, I do regret that. Recently I picked up photography as a hobby so if I had taken a photography course when I had the opportunity I wouldn't have to pay tremendous amount of money to get a decent photography course now now that I'm interested in it as a hobby. The world right now is more and more interdisciplinary. Yes you will make a lot of money as core electrical engineer but you will make more if you're an interdisciplinary researcher. If you have the knowledge of biology and electrical engineering and there is an intersection of that your research will generate much more interest will be much easier to publish in and will have much more traction much more money for you much more success for you so interdisciplinary fields are the future of academia of research of industry of everything anyway so even if you're not taking any courses for hobbies like languages or photography or music or art at least take courses that can open up ways of interdisciplinary research for you now to have all of these regrets you must first get admission in a grad school and get in before you know try to not have these regrets and did you know that 96% grad school applications get rejected without even ever being read if you want to know why and if you want to work on the factors that will help your application get accepted watch this video next and I will see you in the next one